Hello there and welcome again to my workshop. Today I'm going to show you how to make a product for your laser. If you were thinking of buying a laser, so you should be thinking of starting to manufacture things for Christmas. And the laser can do this very, very easily and I'm going to show you how to do it. Just as an example, so the type of items you can think of making for Christmas is, well I'll show you, this small part in the middle here that makes up this central piece for this card is made out of wood. It's one millimeter thick. Here's another one that's made out of 1.5 millimeter wood thick. And this one here, this name uh, plate of Joy at the top here, that's also made out of 1.5 millimeter wood thick. And the laser can make these in seconds. But you need to know how to use the programs behind it to be able to construct something like this. And I am going to show you how to do that. Today I'll be using Vetric Aspire, but there are many programs out there which will do the same sort of job. Uh, Vetrix has at least six different products at six, at six different price ranges. Um, I, I use Vetric Aspire because I use it for uh, a lot of my 3D machining and creating 3D objects. So, I'll show you how to use Vetric Aspire with a laser. Now, this is a raw material image that we're going to put into Vetric Aspire. We are going to use Vetric Aspire to draw the vectors around this image and then put them into a laser program, which is LaserCut 6.1. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump straight into Vetric Aspire on Screen Capture. Okay, so we open Vetric Aspire. So we go to Create a New Job. Uh, these settings are okay for what we require because in LaserCut 6.1 I can adjust the size there. Uh, Single-sided. Z position, Z position at top of the material, it's fine. We're not actually doing a 3D. Back corner over here, that's fine as well. Um, and it really doesn't matter the material because all we're after is the vectors. So we're going to OK this. So now what we do is import our vector. So we come to the file import import a bitmap i've already changed uh, this artwork to a bitmap which is this one and it comes straight in so there's some very simple tools to use now and it's this one here trace the bitmap okay so it's all, you can either do a color picture where you limit the colors or select the color that you want to trace around, but it's very simple to go to a black and white, although it appears gray and white to us. Um, this really doesn't, uh, doesn't matter. Now, these sliders just determine how many colors that uh, you you know you want to trace around uh, you limit the colors because it makes it easier for the program to trace leave it at the the preset amount uh, same goes for the filters here now this in you know you have one for pixel size in other words anything less than two pixels and uh, it won't trace which is exactly what we want. If 
we had like two pixels here, we don't want those vectors. All we want to do is trace around the main body. Um, this one here, if you slide this, it what it does, exactly what it says. Do you want a loose fit or a tight fit? In other words, do you want a sharp, you know, sort of uh, and follow every pixel or do you want the program to round everything off? Um, and, and that's exactly what we want. And the same is for, for this one too. It, this one and this one work in conjunction with each other. What they do, they alter the tolerances to how accurate or, or how defined you want to trace here. And these preset figures I have always found to be pretty perfect actually. So let's preview and it's drawn the vectors and you can see it's pretty perfect and you can see how it's rounded things off and not gone, uh, not traced every pixel and it's evened pixels out to give a nice rounded shape. That's exactly what we want so we're going to apply that and close. So all we're interested there is the the vectors which you can see. So what we're going to do now is select these and we're going to export them in a file and the file we require to export them is a DXF file and we're uh, we want to put it into our Christmas folder. We're going to write in here that it's joy and it's D X F. And we're going to go save. That is now all we need to do. So we just take that DXF file now and import it straight into LaserCut 6.1 and further process it in that program. Okay, so after making our vectors in Vectric Aspire, there's a mouthful, um, and we have saved them in a file format that LaserCut understands. We can now bring it into LaserCut and further treat it in there. Okay, so we come up here to this toolbar for the import tool and we want to import the DXF file that we made of Joy and there it is. So we f further need to process it here in laser cut. So we'll, we'll zoom in a little and the first thing we're going to do is select this outer one here because we don't require simple that. matter of deleting that. Now the next thing we need to do is select the whole, all the vectors and resize it. The size that we require in X, 55 millimeters. So what we need to do, because we don't want to distort this picture, we want to keep the aspect ratio. We need to click this box and then select our X. Everything is governed by the X because we want it to be no more than 55 millimeters long. Um, and that gives us the correct proportions. So we can OK that and it jumps to the right size. Now this does look a little pixely at the moment but the laser, excuse the parrots in the background, <laughs> the laser will make sense of this uh, and it doesn't really matter where we are working with this or where we put this on the table uh, representation here because uh, 
There's a little square up in this corner, that's the zero, zero, providing we set the zero, zero where we want it on our table, there's no problem. The laser will just cut it right there where it is. So now we need to select the, or deselect that, but select the outside vector. So having the outside ve vector selected, we come down to this bottom line down here, and we are going to put this outer vector on a blue layer, just like that. And you'll see up in this top corner up here, a blue layer appears. So on the black layer, we have the inside part, which we won't cut out first, because otherwise, um, if we cut the outside first, then the inside, this part might float around. And we're actually cutting this job out on the honeycomb. I only very rarely use the honeycomb, but in this uh, case we, we do need to use it. Okay, so the first one that we are going to adjust is the black layer. Now I know through experience uh, using this type of wood, and the wood is you can purchase wood. this from any good hardware store or model aircraft outlet. So now we're going to set the laser up, power level and speed. Now I don't like my laser thrashing around, so I like to do it at a very sort of sedate level. And I'm going to go 12 millimeters, which is roughly half an inch per second, that is. 12 millimeters, work speed. Now this is the power required to punch a hole straight through the material. So you need slightly higher power, but not too much, because you'll only make it splatter and burn. So you just want enough to, just for, for the laser to go pop straight through. And that is 18%. That doesn't mean to say it's 18 watts. That's 18% of your total output. In this case, it's around about 25 bits. Um, now, in the corners, that means when the laser comes and changes direction in that corner, sometimes you need a little bit extra, so I normally set that the same. Now the running power is slightly lower. Uh, if you don't have it slightly lower, you start making it black, you know, sort of burning really black, which you don't want. Um, the lighter brown as possible you can get, but you, you still need to cut all the way through in all areas without leaving hairs on it that can sort of um, cause you more problems. So, and I know with this uh, one point, I think it's 1.25, 1 1.25 millimeter, about a sixteenth of an inch, something like that. Um, and I know I have great success at 16. 16%, which is around about the 20 watt mark. Now I have done other videos um, which explain and show you in graphic detail with test meters uh, the relationship between the percentage power output that you set and the actual wattage output of the laser. So you might want to uh, check back on some of my other videos for that. Okay, so we're going to OK that and it's calculated it. So now we're going to get the blue layer. I'm going to set that way exactly the same. And I have always had blowing on because the, the, the small compressor blowing that comes out through the nozzle, what that does, it keeps the, the lens clean and it also cools the lens, so you should have it on all the time. So now we can send that straight to our laser and cut it out. Okay, so this is our material, and 
Yes, it's 1.25 millimeter in thickness, and this is balsa wood. So um, now we have to. So now we have to prepare our laser to cut this. So I have a proximity sensor on my laser, so it's very easy to adjust the focus. So that is the Z taken care of. Okay, so I've already loaded the program into the machine. So I'll zoom you in and we'll cut this first one out. So I'll leave this on real time and so you see the whole process and how quickly it can be done. So we'll do a test first. Okay, we need to reset that further down. Okay. That's why I always do a test first. Okay, there we go. So, we'll cut. So, how quick was that? Matter of seconds, and there it is. So that takes a matter of seconds to cut that out, and it is perfect every time. Okay, so this time we're going to do a small production run, and something I probably didn't show you just now is, uh, this is mild steel. If you have a machine with this is aluminium or you have an aluminium plate on here, get rid of it because aluminium reflects the laser about 98 or 99 percent and you could do yourself some damage. They're very dangerous. Okay, so I have a ma bad magnet here on here to stop this from moving around with the, the, the laser nozzle moving around or even the air blast. In fact I might put two on just to make sure. And we're going to do a small, very small production run now. We're going to make six all together. So we'll and just do a test to make sure that they will all fall in that this, this area. Test. And it will. So here we go. This is six all together. I'll line the camera up a little bit better. So you might be able to see a little bit. If I come in through from the side, sometimes it's a little better for you to see. group now is the baubles. So here we go.
so there you go. So there's six little joys and six little baubles, little Christmas baubles to make cards. Each one of those you can say takes about a minute each. So there is another product for your laser. Okay, I hope you liked that video today. Please subscribe and press like if you have and uh, pop along to my channel which is behind me and uh, there is between two, the, both of my channels now, I have two channels. Uh, there is uh, 400 plus uh, videos. Now a lot of you out there have been messaging me and leaving comments about where I got my laser from and can I recommend one. I'm the engineering company that made my laser no longer exists so uh, I, I can't recommend that but um, what I, I do do in my videos is I give you the tools to what to look for uh, in choosing your manufacturer or your machine and what I would advise uh, if you are a serious hobbyist and you, you you know you want to make the machine over a period of time pay for itself uh, as in a cottage business then or a hobby business uh, the bare minimum which I would say would be a hundred watt laser uh, with a two inch lens, because that's a good all round lens to use. Um, I, I would insist on a recce laser tube. Uh, if you have a look at uh, th my past videos, I, I go into a big explanation. Um, the peak output of that tube should be around about 120 watts, and that really is a 100 watt tube and I explain in my videos about that too. The manufacturer who you choose should supply you, your machine, with a licensed version of uh, a program such as LaserCut 6.1 or RD Works. If they cannot do that, do not buy from them. So I hope that helps you and I hope I'm showing you things that you, you can do and give you your own ideas about what you can make with your so laser. So thank you again for watching the video and it's bye for now.